Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for October 14th, 2024. Well, I hope everyone had a great weekend, got some good rest, because this week is likely going to be a pretty wild and crazy week with the ramp up of earnings season. So what happened overnight? Well, first off, Asian markets. Asian markets had a really good night. Shanghai was up 2.0% last night as they are awaiting more stimulus and the plan for stimulus um, driving the debt of China higher, trying to do anything that they can to keep um, uh, the recovery going over there that's still not looking very good and there are certainly a lot of folks out there saying this is too little too late but we'll see um, India was up uh, South Korea was up um, Nikkei was up 0.57 percent we had Australia up 0.47 uh, percent However, this morning we have a little bit of a mix going on over in Europe. We have the DAX up 0.18%, but the FTSE is down 0.11, and the CAC is down 0.37 this morning. In U.S. futures, also just a little bit of a mix. They have improved overnight. They, they were all red, but right now diamonds is the only thing down 0.12. S&P 500 up 0 0.20 and NASDAQ up 0.33 this morning as we try to continue this extension to the upside. The NASDAQ is still trying to catch up for those all time high breakouts. Let's take a look at um, our uh, bond prices this morning. Now, it's important that, to understand that bond prices are going to be the same as they were as they closed because um, with it being Columbus Day, the bond market is actually closed. So that's going to throw a little wrinkle into today and could make today a very light, choppy day because all the banks will be uh, closed down for today. Not much going on here potentially. If we take a look at the two-year, it ended up on Friday at 3.96%, the 10-year at 410, and the 30-year at 441. So we'll want to keep an eye on those because, or excuse me, yeah, 441, as those prices continue to hold fast in the bonds, it does kind of fly in the face of this rising market that something is out of sync. So watch carefully here. If we take a look at um, oil prices here this morning, oil is moving lower. Um, XLE, we got a little rest pulling back in OIH. Got a little pre-market rest coming in here. Not a major one, but a little bit of rest. As oil backs off just a little bit, down 1.72% and um, Brent uh, being down, uh, excuse me, 2.25% uh, or $1.70 lower per barrel at 73.86 and $1.66 down for Brent at 2.10% uh, um, and then 77.39 a barrel. Natural gas is also a little bit lower here this morning pushing down almost five cents this morning. So we'll want to keep an eye on that as that continues to shed. And um, well, we'll have to wait and see um, how that plays out if this continues to ease. And then if we take a look at our precious metals, you know, gold has been such an interesting um, market here. Typically when the bond yields go higher, when the market goes higher, you typically see gold moving lower. But even this morning, trying to hold up here just a little tiny bit, it is at this moment down $1.80 an ounce, but has been in the green here this morning. So we'll wanna keep an eye on that. And you can see um, in the pre-market, we did try to gap up a little bit and pulling back. Silver this morning, however, is just lower. Uh, copper, platinum, and palladium all moving just slightly lower here this morning. If we take a look at um, 
cryptos here today. Crypto's having a good morning so far. Um, let's take a look at BITO in here. BITO, another zooming upside day after a big rally on Friday. Right now, Bitcoin up $2,199 a coin uh, or 3.54%. Um, Ether is up three dollars, three point five zero percent, um, at eighty five ninety six a coin. So big, big moves here in crypto this morning. If we take a look, um, U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar this morning, unfortunately, also strengthening to the upside, and that is going to continue to put pressure on those commodities and also pressure on the overall market. Is that dollar strengthens and those bond yields could gap higher tomorrow if that continues to show strength. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. So what does all that mean for the day? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Remembering that um, we want to shake off that bias. We want to look at these charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be. So first off, let's take a look at the diamonds here. As you can see, very strong uh, bullish move in here. We continue to show lots and lots of bullishness in the chart, stretching on through into that trend. So um, if the bulls can continue to find inspiration, well, we know that we're opening up, up here, uh, possibly just a little bit lower, but blue, anything that pops above that wick right there, blue sky highs in the diamonds. If the bears, however, were to find some inspiration here on the day, first off, any pullback I think comes back into here, we can find a little bit of support. Then the bigger support in the diamonds would be right in here. So pulling back into there, probably wouldn't hurt us at all. Might be a nice little rest, as a matter of fact, coming across to end to here on the this trend and support and that possibility of slipping below there would probably raise some concern if we were to come down into these levels in the chart. Probably a little fear would come up. Now, I don't expect a whole lot of price movement today, to be honest, because with the big banks, with the banks closed, uh, bond markets closed, probably going to be a lot of folks just taking the day off. So don't be surprised if we see very light, choppy price action here today in the market, unless there's some other news that really comes up to motivate uh, the overall market. If we take a look at our SPY. Um, SPY also new record highs and they're trying to push new record highs here at the moment. So anything above in here, blue sky above, it's all go here for the S&P 500. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration here today, well, we'll start looking at these levels and come back down to the top of that candle, pushing on down maybe into here, find a little price support. We could go a little bit lower, find a nice little strong area of price support right in here off the, all of that consolidation that we were stuck in so long. And if we were to start pushing uh, beyond that point, you'll notice that we'll be testing this upside trend um, and then breaking on down is probably where we would raise some fear. And if we dropped into this range, I'm guessing there'd be a little bit of uh, uncomfortableness in the market. So watch that carefully on the SPY. Our QQQ, obviously working really hard trying to get back up and join the rest of the indexes here. Um, and you can see we've struggled here Friday. We popped up there. Um, and tried, you can notice right in here, a couple of wicks right here. As a matter of fact, the high was 494.47, 494.39. Didn't even quite make it up there Friday beyond that point. But this morning, we're trying to push in the pre market to get a gap above there. So let's keep an eye on that. If we can get back up through this area, then I'd be starting to look at some of these 
areas right in here for that next resistance and then of course after that pushing to the all-time highs seeing if we can pop out of there now if the bears were to find inspiration here today then i would look for this little area right here as some price support pushing back down into there be no harm no foul there pushing a little bit lower than that might raise start raising a little bit of concern if those bears were to find that kind of strength beyond that point we're probably going to be testing this upside trend and then if we were to really get going to the downside into these levels here which would likely raise some fear or concern in the market and then iwm boy iwm had a really good day on friday just taken off like a rocket ship ride so breaking that downtrend here for the first time. So what we're going to want to watch here on this move is if we can continue to push on up, we need to break through this area right in here. And if we can, we push right on up and we'll be testing this area here. Now, what's important about that is if we can break through this area right in here, we could push on through to these highs that were created in 2021 and 2022 up into that area so watch that carefully now that's been an area that's kind of served like kryptonite kryptonite at the uh in recent times here as you can see we just can't seem to get up there and um, we push up into that area and then we just fade it all the way back so watch that carefully here if those bulls can get going because breaking through this area would be really significant now, if those bears were to find any inspiration here today, I would suggest a rest or pull back here to test this little support and test that trend. Would not hurt anything at all. In fact, I think that'd probably be a little bit of a healthy move for IWM. But breaking down below that area, I would suggest coming back down here into this support is a possibility. There's that kind of flat upside trend in here. Um, and it's really a messy trend. Honestly, you could draw that many different ways, but watching that carefully, um, if we were to push on down, we might find a little bit of support right in there, right off of that little gap here in the chart. And down below there is where we're going to probably start raising some fear or concern in the market. No signs of that, at least this morning. If we take a look at the VIX, our VIX... Interestingly enough, with that big, booming move to the upside, boy, it barely pulled back on Friday. As you can see, coming in here, we're still resting on a price support. We really haven't changed much in here in the VIX. So if the bulls can continue to push, we need to break back down through there, start pushing this back down, get below that 20 handle here in the chart, because this is still showing some significant concern in the market. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration, well, we can see the area up here that we would be watching that push back up through here makes that higher low in this chart and could possibly raise a lot of fear or concern so keep that in mind now i wouldn't expect that today just with the banks being closed we kind of expect um really light choppy price action in the market today if we take a look at our uh, t21 oh whoops t21 22 which is the four week new high new low ratio you can see one of our problems that we've got this morning is we're really pumped up here in the bearish reversal zone so pushing this morning uh, to the upside here we really don't have a whole lot of space to move remember that markets can still push up but we're we'll never break out of this up here so we are very extended in um, our markets here for this morning and with the big banks being closed and things like that i kind of suspect we could see light choppy price action maybe even a little fade back because what we have here is we have a little tiny upside opportunity and a very big downside opportunity. So remember, even a consolidation, even a little bit of rest could fade this back here in the market. If we take a look at our T2108, 
which is a percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average. It finally got a good move on Friday, pushing up. Unfortunately, we really didn't fix a whole lot in here. We still have these overall trends here in the chart that, well, maybe still um, could come into play. But the good news is we did finally get that relief back to the upside. Um, we've got a little resistance right in here, a little bit more right up into here that we'll have to be paying attention to as we push back up. But breaking and holding, getting back above 50%, obviously helping out in that confidence of the market so more than half the stocks back above their 40-day moving average and that does mean that the bulls are in control if we take a look at our t2107 we see in here that t2107 continues to show us that that the bulls are in control almost well right at 58 percent i should say 58 percent of the stocks above their 200 day moving average. Unfortunately, as we push back up, we really didn't change this downtrend in here. So still that little bit of concern here in the market that we've got these little downtrending items going on. Remember, we're still in the corporate buyback or blackout here in uh, the market. So that's one of the reasons why we may kind of struggle a little bit here to move on up, depending on how these earnings go. If you take a look, we've got a lot of resistance in the chart here for us to deal with as well. But you got to give this to the bulls. They are in control. And if we take a look at our T2101, well, our T2101 continues to show that decline in breadth. So even as we stretched and stretched on Friday, our breadth of the market continued to decline. So if we were to see any kind of reversal here in the market, just know that we didn't get a lot of support from those corporate buybacks that are doing anything in there. And that's going to continue here um, for um, quite some time as we start to go through that these earnings and a few companies will start sliding out from underneath that breadth problem in the market. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar, excuse me, our economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar, well, there's not a whole lot going on in here. And why don't I have that economic calendar right there? Uh, here it is, it was hiding from me. So there we have our economic calendar for today, and there honestly isn't a whole lot for us to be worried about here today. You notice that we've got Fed speakers. Even though the banks are closed, the Fed speakers are going to be out talking this morning. And that's going to be the end of today's economic calendar. Not much going on. We got that global economics number in there, but not not going to be a market mover. Of course, we have uh, on Tuesday, Empire State Manufacturing, more Fed speakers, some bond auctions. Wednesday, mortgage applications, import export prices will be in there. Um, um, corporate buybacks and little bond or bill auction. As you can see, Thursday is where things are going to ramp up a bit. Um, we've got uh, jobless claims, retail sales, Philly Fed. We've got industrial production. We're going to have business inventories, housing market index. We're going to get the natural gas report in there and a petroleum status report on the same day. As you can see, Goolsby will be speaking and several bond auctions along with the Treasury International Capital and Fed balance sheet. And then on Friday, uh, another wave of Fed speak as we've got four Fed speakers in here. We've got a housing starts and permits number coming in on Friday. So we're going to begin the week with a lot of light um, data, data in here. And they've kind of compiled it, most of it, into Thursday to be paying attention to this week. On the earnings calendar here today, well, <clears throat> there isn't much anything going on. As a matter of fact, not a single notable here for today, um, either before the bell or after the bell to provide inspiration. And of course, with the bond market being closed, well, you're likely going to see that there is not a whole lot of activity overall in the market. Remember Tuesday, we're going to go right back into 
big bank reports and um, the ramp up of earnings season. So there's things like Bank of America, Citibank, uh, Schwab will be reporting, State Street, PNC Financial, those kind of things tomorrow. But today, not much at all going on. So look for that light choppy day to occur. If we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today, but before we do that, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And thank you so much for everyone who continues to support the channel here because Again, um, I never in my wildest dreams thought there would be folks that would be interested in uh, content like this. And remember, the content like this was really made for me, and I just happened to share it in the market because one of the things I always struggled with in my trading was that emotion in the market. And by doing this work, it helps set my my thought for the day and prevents me from over trading, uh, becoming overly emotional in the market. It helped me a lot. And without all that hype and without all that prediction, um, I was just really surprised that folks would be willing to support this kind of information. So thank you everyone. It's very humbling to me when you click those thumbs up buttons, leave those brief comments, that helps a lot. And also thank you so much to those folks who share these uh, links out on your social media feed. Thank you for that. that. That also helps a bunch. And for those who continue to support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link just below the title of the video. Um, also, I want to remind everyone that tonight we had a little bit of switcheroo in schedule uh, because of the hurricane. I will be doing e-learning tonight. And so everyone is invited to our, our public e-learning. Um, just come on over to the Hit Run Candlesticks website. Remember, right at the top of the page is the link that will get you in. No password required. And I'm going to be talking about my favorite chart patterns and why they're my favorite chart patterns. Oftentimes, we'll talk about patterns, but won't give a whole lot of got to thinking we don't give a whole lot of detail of why we believe these are great chart patterns. So um, we're going to talk about that tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. I hope you guys are available. Love to see you there. Let's take a look at a few of these charts and remember these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful here in the market. Thank you. Um, um, Thank you for um, also recognizing that I had a little bit of a problem this morning with uh, a couple of things that I had to take care of. And so I didn't get a blog done today, but we're going to try and make it up here with a little bit of um, potentially actionable items if the market remains bullish. And then remember, these um, you need to do your own due diligence. Follow your um, risk tolerances, your rules. You should never, ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. First off, let's take a look at CPNG. CPNG has been moving up nicely here in this chart, as you can see, just running up nicely, breaking through some um, resistance in here, and that nice little consolidating platform up here that I look for. Um, I, I call these a pop out of the box. We'll talk about this tonight, um, but these are good low risk entry opportunities into trade. So watch that carefully as this slides out to the trade watch for that next opportunity for that to push on through every reason to believe that could keep going to the upside Shopify Shopify also looking in a very nice pattern here as you can see I've got this entire line up here alerted on the chart coming right up into this trend and look at right there we got a little bit of push in the pre-market here on Shopify this may pop that alert first thing this morning start stretching on up and we've got a target up here that we could reach initially but then there'd be blue sky above there on Shopify. Watch that 
closely here today. Pinterest is one that I have talked about and there's that pattern breaking through to the upside. Now, interestingly enough, as much as we had in bullishness on Friday, it didn't get too carried away to the upside. So even if this were to rest back just a little bit toward this trend, I'd still be watching for that opportunity for Pinterest to move on higher. Notice we've got a break through this area here. And if we can, we've got an upside gap that could be filled pretty easily in that chart. So watch carefully for that opportunity. Um, APLD. APLD was one of those charts that was giving me that nice resting consolidation in here. But doggone it, volatility of the market. We slipped in here and dropped below the trend tested it as resistance and then continued to show a little bit of concern here and a possible failure. Now, what we're seeing right here in this price action is we're trying with the bullishness of the market to squeeze this back up again. But before this becomes bullish, this needs to get back through that resistance, prove it can hold and then show me that follow through to the upside to give me a bullish pattern because we run the risk that this can just pop into that resistance and then start moving lower here. So watch that closely. Uh, McDonald's continues to look really good in this consolidating pattern moving out here to trend. I would watch that carefully for that opportunity to move on through to the upside. And I'm going to say the same for DoorDash because it did make that popping move on Friday coming up out of here. Um, continuing to follow through this morning, I would look for that stretch maybe up into here. We've got some price resistance that goes all the way over here into 2022. So watch that carefully pushing up into there. If it breaks through there, then we've got some more um, nice upside opportunity to come through in DoorDash. Don't be too surprised if it rests a little bit, but I would continue to watch this bullish trend. It looks very, very good. Take a look at Roku. Roku also, we kind of slipped past the trend here just a little bit as we were doing all that chopping around in the market. But then those bulls came through, pushing through um, my alert in here. And you can see we popped through, rested just a little bit. Now we're continuing that move on up. Watch right here. If it pops through up here, that could be a really good sign of more upside to come. And look over here, you can see there's a pretty substantial gap that could be filled to the upside. So a uh, nice upside opportunity there in Roku. Keep an eye on that one. Um, I'm still liking what I'm seeing in um, gold. Let's take a look at our precious metal here. Gold still holding lots and lots of bullishness. Now, although we're pulling back here today, remember, and no bond uh, market today make this may make this a little bit difficult to get much of anything going here overall. But watch that carefully. If those bond yields continue up um, on Tuesday, I would look for that opportunity that gold could push right on through um, to all-time highs here. So watch that carefully. Remember, I think it was Morgan Stanley or somebody put a 3,000 handle out there possibility on gold by the end of the year. So I'd keep an eye on that um, here in the market. Um, also, let's keep an eye on some of these financials. Now, the XLF had a really good day on Friday, breaking through this triple top resistance here in the chart. So our new upside trend is right along in here and we've got a lot more big bank reports coming our way uh, tomorrow so watch that carefully showing bullishness wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of a consolidation or rest in here but with those bank um, reports coming out we also can't rule out the possibility of more extension to the upside there take a look at kre some of our regional banks now regionals also had a really good day on friday and pushing on up so let's watch this carefully in here if we can break on through this area here we obviously we've broke this downtrend right in here if we can break on through 
here on those regional banks we may be in pretty good shape but watch that carefully if this were to fade back in here uh, then look for that next opportunity in those big banks so with that guys there's quite a few stocks for you to pay attention to something for you to look at um, I want to wish you all the very very best today thanks so much and once again I apologize there's no blog today just ran out of time to get it done so um, I do apologize for that but we'll get the video out and um, just remember could be a very light choppy day with the bond market being closed. Take care, be safe. I'll see you right back here, bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you all the very best.